I've talked about the January 6th Capitol riot a few times, and for that reason, I really do not want to belabor the point. Uh, recently, information came out indicating that GOP lawmakers were, quote, intimately involved in January 6th protest planning, a report found. Now, we had all suspected this was the case for a long time. Uh, this isn't surprising to me, but it is something we should talk about uh, and, and to reframe and contextualize a few arguments we've had in the past. Let's just listen to a little bit and we'll see how we feel, huh? An alarming new report from Rolling Stone alleges direct coordination among planners of the January 6th insurrection and high-profile Trump allies in an attempt to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. Yamiche Alcindor explains. The Rolling Stone article cites anonymous organizers who claim they coordinated with White House officials and Republican lawmakers multiple times in the weeks leading up to January 6th. I'm now joined by the author, Hunter Walker. Thanks so much, Hunter, for being here. Now, you were at the Capitol on January 6th. You also talked to two of these individuals who were involved in planning the events that happened on January 6th. What was the most important thing you learned about the former president, former Very President Trump, his, his efforts to try to overturn the election that he lost as well as his possible involvement in January 6th after talking to these individuals. I mean, I think the mere fact that these individuals... Haven't we watched this? Yes. But when we covered it before, I was almost catatonically tired. We're going to correct that this time. ...who I confirmed were involved in planning and organizing the main rally on the ellipse, as well as multiple of the protests against the election that happened in the weeks uh, leading up to that day. Uh, I think the fact that they spoke to the press and the fact that they're communicating with the committee is pretty notable in and of itself, because it means that, you know, with this aggressive investigati investigation heating up, people are starting to turn uh, and cooperate with the government here. And nice. you're, of course, talking about the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack. And I want to ask you about the multiple lawmakers that you write about in your article. Who were the lawmakers talking to organizers and what were they saying? Hit them up. So both of my sources said they participated in, quote unquote, dozens of briefings with Republican members of Congress and their staff. That included Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, Paul Gosar, Mo Brooks, Madison Cawthorn, and Louis Gohmert. And we've already had some indications that these members were involved in the efforts to overturn the election. They spoke at the events at the Ellipse. They were billed as speakers at this wild protest. Gosar headlined a Stop the Steel rally in Arizona. But what they specifically described was these members sort of strategizing to help them pick state locations for protests that would target persuadable senators to join the objection. And they were also going back and forth trading, quote unquote, evidence of supposed election fraud. Obviously, you know, any of that would have been baseless, but they described them as intimately involved in kind of plotting a grand show that day, both at the Ellipse and on the House floor. Nice. All right, let's talk about this. So <clears throat> essentially, as far as we can tell, some people are turning and giving info and there are Republican lawmakers who directly coordinated with January 6 organizers. Uh, in an attempt to uh, plan out the attack on the Capitol, not directly the attack, but the event in, um, in, in, in ways to maximize the likelihood of them, uh, quote, stopping the steal, you know, and them uh, preventing the verification of the election results. Now, this went as far as Gosar. Gosar? That's the uh, one who's friends with Nick Fuentes, right? Uh, he said that he would try to get, or that he would assure a blanket pardon in case anyone got in trouble. So uh, if you're assuring a blanket pardon beforehand, you're essentially admitting that you believe the other people are going to engage in activity that will get them arrested. They knew very well it would happen. They knew it would be an attack on the Capitol. There's no other reason why you would ever need to talk about a blanket pardon. So I want to talk about the implications of this. There are a lot of people on the left, unfortunately, and mostly on the right, who argue that we overplay January 6th. So I'm happy to say here, I really don't care about what happened to January 6th on its own. On its own, uh, it was an attack and a few people died. Many people die every day from insulin, you know, uh, deficiencies and car accidents. The deaths immediately in that one instance, that scenario, uh, are infinitesimally small in significance compared to the real issue at hand here. The real issue at hand with January 6th is that it is an inarguable piece of evidence 
that uh, Republicans are willing to throw their weight behind direct attacks on our democracy. I've used this example before, but if you were to imagine that uh, Republican politicians, lawmakers, pundits were to continue fueling the flames of partisan divide, you know, Democrats are trying to kill all Americans, whatever, they say anything and everything. Uh, do you think it is at all unlikely that one day in the near future, Democratic senators or Congress people might be shot by some Republican gunmen? It seems fairly likely to me. There are efforts at doing this caught from time to time. If one succeeded, might we imagine what the Republican Party's response would be? 20 years ago, the response of the Republican Party would be to unequivocally condemn the behavior of the shooter. But now, I don't think they would. I think first they would say it's a false flag, and second they would say it's Antifa. Third, they would eventually, after all the evidence came out, they would say, you yeah, know, okay. But maybe we should consider how drastic the behavior of the Democrats are uh, to drive ordinary Americans to engage in behavior like that. That's what they would say. Oh, it's a tragedy. But you have to wonder, what are the Democrats doing to get people so riled up? Maybe the Democrats should reconsider what they're doing if it's leading to behavior like this. It would be essentially an endorsement. This is what will happen, by the way. I am not speculating. I have peered into the future. I have torn through the veil of time. This is what they will do. If they're willing to do it to January 6th, how many Republicans were claiming it was Antifa? The mainline Republican narrative right now is either to downplay the Capitol riot or to basically endorse it. That's the main line. This isn't like some tiny fringe. That's the main line perspective right now. And the ones who don't have that perspective keep quiet because they know that to speak out and denounce the other Republicans would mean they don't win re-election. They'll be denounced as a rhino. Trump will make a blog post about them. So the Republican Party is essentially down for acts of terrorism to destabilize the democracy in ways that can get much worse in the future. January 6th on its own was not that big of a deal, after all. No lawmakers were killed, non-lawmakers were killed, but ultimately they failed. They did not interrupt the democratic process. Uh, but they can try again, you know? They can try again and again and again. And every time they try, they whittle away at our processes just a little bit more. Every judge they appoint, every law put forward, every attack is statistically uh, an increase to the likelihood that they will eventually succeed. That is what one in a million shots are. And that's to assume, by the way, that this was a one in a million shot. I think January 6th was maybe like a one in 20, to be honest with you. But if you repeat a small, uh, you know, a, 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 an unlikely dice roll over and over and over, eventually you're going to get it. Because they only need to win once. We need to win every time to preserve the democracy. Every single time they make an attempt at it, we need to be the one who prevails. But they only need to do it once. Because as soon as they succeed, we no longer have a democracy in which we have the opportunity to mount a defense. That's that. We lost. It's like murder attempts, really. You know, maybe somebody takes a shot at your life and they fail hilariously. Okay. But if they keep trying and trying and trying, they'll get better at it with time, too. They'll be a better shot. They'll learn your patterns and your movement a little bit better, and eventually they will succeed. Now, how do we keep attempted murderers from eventually succeeding in their mission? How do we do... If, they're, if they just keep trying and trying, eventually they're going to succeed. How do we... What, what interrupts them from eventually reaching this statistical inevitability? We put them in prison... We put them in prison. Really? That's an option? Oh, well, that's not applicable here. We're talking about a murderer here. Uh, but in the example that I'm kind of, you know, relaying this to, uh, I'm only talking about something as essential as the future of the democracy in this country. Can you tell me why the folks tied to the January 6th insurrection have not been locked up for sedition? Sedition, it's a conspiracy. In the truest legal sense, they collaborated with people they acknowledged would get into legal trouble 
in an effort to prevent or at least delay the enactment of a United States law. That is the definition of sedition. They meet it flawlessly. But yet nothing's going to be done, will it? In any reasonable country, all of those people uh, would be in jail right now. This is a distinctly anti-authoritarian perspective. I'm not asking for a violation of free speech or whatever else. This is, I mean, they violated existing laws. We have laws against sedition. I can read, hold on, U.S. definition, se sedition. I mean, this isn't, we're not making anything up here. Hold on, 18 U.S. Code 2384. Now, please tell me if this sounds at all familiar. If two or more persons in any state or territory or any place subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S. conspire to overthrow, put down, or to by force, to destroy by force the government of the U.S., to levy war against them, to oppose by force the authority thereof, or by force, listen, to prevent, hinder, or delay the execution of any law of the United States, or by force to seize, take, or possess any property of the U.S., sedition. They attacked the Capitol to stop the ratification of the votes. This is clean. This is one to one. Now I'm going to make a broader argument here, and I don't have I don't have you know magic voodoo powers. I can't just make these people get arrested. I will say, however, that if we do not find a way to punish behavior like this, this country is already dead, and I mean that very very sincerely. This country's already gone. In its current state, with no deterrent to a party, which is essentially admitted they're comfortable supporting terrorism to destroy our democracy, with no deterrent against that behavior, it is a mathematical certainty that eventually they will prevail. And they have been stacking the deck in their favor for a long time, too, from gerrymandering the existence of the, um, uh, of the Senate uh, of the Electoral College, the fact that they uh, 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 essentially broke gentlemen's agreements to deny Obama a Supreme Court pick, but then rushed in some while Trump was in. This is, they are doing everything they can to stack the deck, and they're not going to stop trying to stack the deck because it's working in their favor. Democrats are weak. Democrats have no in-party cohesion. They are incapable of getting anything done culturally. Every once in a while you can pass a policy and, you know, great, but Democrats aren't really that good at changing the fabric of our society. Republicans, despite being a minority in government and in their actual party constituency, uh, are much better at doing that. They lead the charge. They set the standard. They control the discourse. And why? Well, they don't have a majority of media control. Hollywood generally produces progressive media by American standards. You know, uh, if you combine all the major news apparatuses, I mean, it's basically like Fox News, OAN, Newsmax. These are outliers, large outliers, but nonetheless, we seem to have a majority in every meaningful way. And yet somehow they are still the ones continuously stacking the deck in their favor, because if they hadn't, there would have been no chance for us. If we don't find a way to reverse that process, a way to overcome our apparent inability to deal with them, uh, this country is already dead, and we will die with it. Unless you don't live in America, in which case you'll die shortly afterwards, because a fascist United States uh, is probably bad for your part of the world, too.